Good morning, Facebook family and friends. This is Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life and National Ministries. And we want to welcome you to our Saturday morning virtual worship service. We don't own the rights to this music going way back with Daryl Foley and in the arms of Jesus at Azusa Conference with Carlton Pearson. We don't own the rights to this music, but I tell you, God is an awesome Savior, and He is just, woo! I tell you, I'm just so excited this morning. But come on in, come on in, come on. Let's like, 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 share, share, and, and share again. I'm going to be inviting friends and family in a minute, Facebook family and friends. And, and so we, we are just so excited about you being with us this morning. Come on, let's come on in, like, 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 and share. We're going to be sharing this morning, I tell you. God is an awesome Savior, kind-hearted friend, and I tell you, we are excited. So if you would, please, like, like, share, share, and share this broadcast with your friends and family on Facebook. This is once again Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries. And we want to welcome you to our virtual, our Saturday morning virtual worship service. Amen. I'm just excited about God. Amen. I love this song. It talks about being safe in the arms of our Savior. Amen. And so he is great and he is greatly to be praised. So come on in, come on in, come on in. God is an awesome Savior, kind-hearted friend. Amen, 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 amen. I tell you, we're just so happy, so happy. Come on in. If you're just joining us, I am Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries. Amen. And we just want to welcome you to our virtual worship service this morning. Come on in. We're going to take a couple of minutes to like, 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 and share, share, and share again. We're inviting people on this morning. We're inviting people on. We're on our Gypsy link as well. So we just wanted to invite you guys to come on in. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on in this morning. Come on in this morning. Come on in. We'll be starting about another minute or so. We're going to be starting in about another minute or so. But we want to tell you guys welcome. Come on in, come on in. We are like, 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 and share, share, and share again. So come on in, come on in, come on in this morning. We don't know why people at, come on, come on in this morning. We are also on our Jissy link, so for those of you who may be having a bit of issues with Facebook, you can meet us on our Jissy link at meet.jit.si forward slash WWN prayer call. Amen. And we are here. Welcome and ready for you this is stand and proclaim amen amen by Benita washington we don't own the rights to this music but come on in she's a great worshiper i love her i love her i love her we're gonna give people about 30 more seconds 30 more seconds and we're gonna go ahead and get started amen about 30 more seconds come on in come on in for those of you who are just joining us i am apostle tiffany d giles of the diocese of everlasting life International Ministries, and I want to welcome you to our Saturday morning virtual worship service. Amen. And we're just taking this time to like, 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 and share, share, and share again. Amen. And so come on in, come on in, come on in, come on in. Amen. Come on in. Well, I'm here with uh, Pastor Donna of the Church of Buffalo, the Elam of Buffalo Church. And so if you're here, Donna, and you're ready to get started in prayer, we're going to go ahead and get started. Are you ready? Okay, well, let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I just thank you, Father. For yes, Lord God. God. Father, I first ask you, Father, to forgive us if we said or done anything that was not pleasing to you to the eyes of the angels, oh God. Yes, right Lord. Father, we gather here on today, oh God, to give you thanks and praise for your greatness, oh God. Father, we praise your mighty works on this on this morning, Father God. Father, we praise, Father God, you for your wonderful deeds, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, Father, Jesus, yes, Lord. Limitless. Yes, God. God, your grace is overwhelming, oh God. Ooh, your Jesus, love yes, God. Is never failing, oh Father, right now, God. Father, 
Father God, you promised that you would never leave us or never forsake us, oh God. Yes, so Jesus. allow us, God, to worship you in spirit and in truth on this morning, oh Father. As our very own Apostle Mama is going forth, Father God, with the word, oh Father. Yes, I ask Jesus. you, oh God, to open up the eyes and the ears of your people, oh God, so that they can see and hear you clearly, oh God, and take heed to this word, oh Father. Right now, in Jesus' name, in Jesus we pray name. Oh God. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Donna, for opening us in prayer. I tell you, this morning, I am just excited, excited, excited. You know, I woke up this morning and the enemy was trying to discourage me. I, I woke up with a sign and said, I'm like, where in the world did this come from? You know, Lord, I got I got to get online. I, I have a virtual worship service to do. And so I just began to push myself and just began to tell God, thank you. God, I thank you for life. I thank you for health. God, I thank you for my strength. You know, I bind, I bind the, the enemy of illness is trying to attack my body this morning to try to discourage me. And so I just re was reminded of King David. Y'all know I love King David. I love Apostle Paul, but how David had an obstacle. He had a tragedy to occur, but how he called for the priest and he was brought the ephod and he fell on his knees before the Lord, you know, and, and it doesn't matter what the tragedy was. It didn't matter what the challenge was or what he had to go through, but he knew that he could triumph in God. And so this morning, I want to encourage some of you all. I don't know who that's for, but I know it's for someone. I want to encourage you today, you know, no matter how it looks like, no matter how you may even feel in your bodies, just get up and begin to tell God, thank you. Begin to worship him, begin to honor him and watch what God will do for you. Amen. So once again, if you are just joining us, I am Apostle Tiffany D. Giles of the Diocese of Everlasting Life International Ministries, and I want to welcome you to our Saturday morning broadcast where Jesus definitely is Lord. And we've been talking about a whole lot of stuff lately, a whole lot of good stuff lately. You know, we went through our series on trusting God and sacrificing. I tell you, that series just, it blew my mind. It just let me know how important I am to God when I go above and beyond how God is going to recognize my private sacrifice publicly. And I tell you, not that I, I, I'm trying to be a great such a much or even to be recognized or noticed publicly, but it's just the fact of the matter that God just did not forget about me and all of the sacrifices that I've made for this walk in him. I tell you, just to know that, because I tell you one thing, you can't be God's giving. No man can. And so I just praise and I thank God for that series. Amen. And so today, today we are, we are looking at, we are looking at today, we're looking at uh, the Apostle Paul and his second missionary journey. You know, I, I love the different missionary journeys because it shows us how the word of God was sent out to the masses through his disciples, through the apostles. And to me, that's just one of the greatest phenomenals ever because life then is not like it is now. You know, we can get on a plane, we can get a train, we can get on a boat, we can take a cruise. You know, we can do so many different things that makes it easy for us to travel. But I was reading a book about how Paul had to go through great limps and, and, and a lot of times they were traveling by foot. It wasn't a car, it wasn't a horse, it wasn't a camel, but they were gr uh, traveling across great terrains and through mountains and through bushes. And on this second missionary journey, Paul sought to travel through the woods, through the forest, over great terrain, over the mountain, uh, mountainous areas. And I thought, wow, you, you, you got to really be sacrificing. You got to really know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you were called to take God's word through the masses. That you were called, you know, to just deliver his word because it wasn't an easy travel back then. But whatever it took, I really believe that the disciples thought that whatever it took, by any means necessary, did they travel. Amen. And they did what it took to spread the gospel. Of Jesus Christ. And so this morning we're going to be talking about uh, the scripture of Acts the 16th. The chapter of Acts 16 is our background chapter, but our key scripture is Acts the 16th chapter, the 25th through the 28th verses. And if I would have someone to just please put that, if you're on our GC link, put it out on our GC link. If you're looking at us by way of Facebook, if you would write that in the comment area. And I want to say hello to everybody who has joined us this morning, to Bishop Stanley Alexander, to Pastor Thomas Sims of the Buffalo, New York area. 
uh, to my daughter, Ashley, to my daughter, Donna, you know, thank you all for joining us this morning and to the other ones that are uh, currently logging on. I just want to tell you, thank you for your support. Amen. But we're talking about Acts 16, 25 and 28, where Paul is taking his second missionary journey. And, you know, during those times, some, some rough stuff happened to Paul. You know, he, he was traveling with Silas at that time, you know, and we're going to find out in the scripture that Paul and Silas are imprisoned and during their prison time. Oh, come on, somebody during their time of being taken captive of, of being, you know, put in chains and bound. God does something so miraculous that it just blows their mind. Amen. But we're talking about uh, key scripture, Acts 16, 25 through 28. And I'm going to read it to you out of the NIV version. And it says, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaking. Oh, God, my. At once, all of the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. Now, come on, you know, God, and that's another miracle that Paul, that God gives Paul. He not only shakes the prison, the foundation of the prison, that the doors fly open. Not only do the doors fly open, but the chains where the people are being held captive, they are loosened. And the jailer is held responsible. He's responsible for all of this. And so he's about to draw this because he knows the consequences. He, he knows the penalty <laughs> for the prisoners escaping under his command. So he draws his sword to kill himself. But Paul stops him and says, no, 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 no. We're all here. Don't harm yourself. And so here we are at Paul's second missionary journey. And, and what's going on here, the reason that Paul is in prison is because they're there getting ready to spread the gospel. They're going from home to home. And, you know, they're praying for people. They're, they're sharing the word of God. They're sharing the love of Jesus Christ with the people. And this woman with this evil spirit, who's pretty much known as a soothsayer, or, you know, she's a problem like Madam Ruby or somewhere like that, where people come and they give money to the people who, who lured her or her enslaved her. And so that's the way that they're, they're, they're making their living. But one thing that this woman is doing as she's going around the town and, and you know, she's, she's following them and following them. The one thing that she says over and over constantly and constantly that these men are servants of the most high God. And they're telling you about the ways of our Lord and savior. Now, isn't that something? foul spirit is in her and she's following them but she's proclaiming the truth that these men are the servants of the almighty god and they're telling you how to get connected to him how to be saved how to inherit the kingdom of heaven and so paul gets he's he's tired of her coming behind them and just just shouting and heralding and marking them so he turns around and he speaks to the evil spirit that's in her and he rebukes it and asks it to leave and it leaves he commands it to leave and it leaves. And so when that spirit leaves, all the soothsaying, all the future telling, all the reading of the palms, that goes too. And so the people that are in charge of her, they become angry. They become upset because guess what? The money is now gone. They can't make any money. And so they go and pretty much snitch on Paul and Silas. And, and then we know that they are imprisoned because of this. And so the most miraculous thing about this story, about Acts, the 16th chapter, is that the jailer is saved. He's converted. And not only is he converted, but his household, people that serve him, the people who he take care of, his family, they're converted. And so this Acts, the 16th chapter, is probably one of the most vital periods in Christianity for our apostle Paul, because he he begins to talk and he, he he works with people and he's beginning to train Silas to spread the word of the gospel because this is also the last time one of the last letters that he will write before 
his demise. And so it's such a great movement in this chapter because it shows the journeys that he took just to spread the, the word of God. And so today we want to know, you know, if I had to coin this, give it a title, it would be, there is a way of escape when you're in bondage, when your hands are tied, when you don't know what to do, when everything is coming at you, when you're being held captive, God will provide a way of escape. And so here we are this morning, jail does, you know, Paul doesn't know what he's going to do. Him and him and Silas are in bondage, they're in jail, but it's a couple of things that Paul does to keep going. It, it, it just, it doesn't matter what's being done to you. It doesn't matter what's been said. It doesn't matter what plot has been formed to, against you. It's a way of escape that will be provided for you by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Paul knew that he had to keep going, even in jail, even in prison, even when chains are on you and you're locked down, you're in bondage, you're in captivity, you still got to keep going, amen, because there is a way of escape. And so this morning we want to talk about Paul and Silas and their time in prison and how God provided a way of escape. And the first thing that they did, and if you guys can write that out there in our GC link as, as well as on our Facebook page, the first thing that Paul did was he began to encourage himself in the Lord. Oh, come on. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And, and I, I often think about King David, of how he was on the battle back from Ziglag. And when he got home, he realized that all his stuff was gone. And not only his stuff, like his cattle and his cows and his homes and maybe a little bit of furniture and that, but his wives were gone. His children were gone. And not only were his wives and his children gone, but the men that served him, the men that fought in the war with him, all their stuff was gone too. Have you ever been robbed <laughs> for the sake of the kingdom? Have you ever been taken down for the sake of the kingdom? Have you ever been beat up and, and forced to go into this place where you know that it may be the end of it all? Have you ever been there? When now we see King David, he's there. We see Apostle Paul, they're there. But in spite of all of that shenanigan, in spite of all the things that they're going through, they encourage themselves in the Lord. Amen. For in Acts 16 and 25, it says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Listen, you don't know who in the world you're touching when you just keep going. When you just continue to do the things of God, you don't know who's paying attention to you. So they, they did what they knew to do. They fell on their knees and began to pray. They began to worship. They began to extol God. And so does King David. He sends for the priest. He sends for the ephod. He, he falls on his knees and he begins to consult God. He begins to pray and send worship up to God. And then God delivers an answer. Whew, my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. So you mean to tell me, Apostle T, and all this that I'm going through, and all these shenanigans, and all of the foolishness, and all these plots, and plans to, to get rid of me and for my demise to shut me down. God has a way of escape for me. Yes, he does. But you got to learn how to encourage himself in the Lord. For the word of God says that, and David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning him. Come on, they were mad with him. You know, David, we followed you. We did what you said the almighty God required of us. And this is what we get. Because the soul of all the people, they were grieved. This is the word. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. What do you mean? You got to talk to yourself. You got to fall on your knees and consult God. And there will be a way of escape. For the Lord told David, pursue. You ain't going to just recover a little bit. You're just not going to go back and get one wife. But you shall recover. And we know how that story goes. David pursued. And everything that was stolen. Everything that was taken. He regained. And so in this encouraging yourself. You got to pray. And you got to seek God. So the first thing you've got to do. Come on. How do you stay afloat? How do you stay when 
things are about falling apart. You got to encourage yourself. How do you keep doing what you do? How do you keep going? You encourage yourself in the Lord. Number two, always obey the laws of the land. You can't be crooked. You can't do what the enemy do and say you're getting back, that you're getting revenge. That's not the word. For the Lord says, if you hold my peace, I'll fight your battles. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. It's not your place. I need you to stay in your lane. And so the first thing you need to do is encourage yourself in the Lord. Pray and seek God. Number two, always obey the laws of the land. We see, we see Paul and Silas are imprisoned. They're praying and they're consulting God and God has presented a way of escape for them. But it ain't the way that you think it is. Yes, the foundations of the prison was shaking. Yes, the doors came open. The chains fell off. But when the jailer went to kill himself, Paul cried out, no, we're still here. So when no one else is looking, <laughs> can you still do the right thing? When no one else is watching, when you've got to make a decision whether or not to obey the laws of the land, will you be that person? And so Romans 13, 1 and 2 says, obey the government, for God is the one who has put it there. There is no government anywhere that God has not placed in power. Come on, this is the word. So those who refuse to obey the law of the land are refusing to obey God and punishment will follow. Some of you all know what I do for a living. You know, I, I teach children who are incarcerated and I often tell them, you know, I ask them a question, what makes a man a man? And they look at me sometime and I go, I, I've already given you the answer. The answer is the choices that we make. That's what makes a man a man. It's our choices. And know that whatever choice you make, there is ramifications. There's rules and regulations. There are consequences and or rewards. And so be careful. God has put it in his word to obey the laws of the land. Paul and Silas didn't leave the prison. When the foundations were shaking and the prison doors flung open and the chains fell off. They knew that it was other souls at stake. People were watching them. You don't know who's looking at you. Someone is always watching. Remember God. Even when you think no one can see you, God can. So follow the laws of the land. Obey the laws of the land. In Acts 16, 29, the jailer called for the lights. He rushed in because Paul didn't leave. <laughs> Him and Silas stayed still. They knew the word. They knew the God they served. They were there to win souls for the kingdom. So no matter what was going on, they had to fall in position and act right. And so this jailer, it's a soul, it's a soul that will bring in many. He comes and he runs in, he cuts on the lights. He's trembling. Uh, I'm, I can only imagine a, an earthquake of that magnitude that will open the prison doors and loose the chains. He's trembling. He doesn't know what to do. He falls on his knees before Paul. And Paul and Silas, I just believe, begin to pray, continue to pray, continue to honor God. Because now we see the way of escape. We see what God is doing. God's trying to win a soul, not just a soul, but a family, a household. And so he knows that we, Paul and Silas, have to be in right standing and right living in order to grab the attention of that jailer. And that's what they do. And know that when all of this surfaces, when you stay in the right place, when you are able to win a soul, when your life is verification that God can be justified, that there can be right living and a right standard, then here comes the souls that you are able to win. And so in the end, we know how this all works out in Acts 16, 35 and 36. When it was daylight, the magistrates sent their officers to the jailer with the order. <laughs> Him, oh my God. What if Paul and Silas would have ran? Mm -mm -mm. Some of you all are running and it's not quite time to leave. 
Ah, my God. God is trying to give you the full effect. He's trying to give you the full blessing. He's trying to bring this thing full circle. But you've left before time. Ah, my shatorobo shata. Hey, oh God, I feel you. I feel you on that one. You're leaving. You're, you're, you're forfeiting the blessing. You're leaving before time. You're trying to put the cart before the horse. God says it's not time. Stay in the fire. Stay right there. I got a way of escape, but it's not by your own hands. It won't be by your own doing, but it will be by mine, saith the Lord. Ah, that's a word for someone. You know, someone's trying to, you're just looking for a way to get out. You're looking for your way. You're looking for your way. But Paul and Silas felt on their knees because I'm going to tell you in this place called prayer, instructions are given in this place of worship. Ha, worry is deleted in this place that Paul and Silas were in answers come from God. And so here we are. The men are released because they heard God. They didn't move. They obeyed the laws of the land and they stood still. And because of their, I, I just believe it was their characteristics because of their behavior. Uh, because they didn't do what they thought the, everybody else was going to do. You know, ain't no way you in jail and you in prison and chains fall doors open and folk ain't running. But Paul and Silas said, no, we're going to stand until God says otherwise. And so in that morning, they were released. The magistrate gave an order to release them. And the jailer tells Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave. Go in peace. It's just ain't time yet. Stay until God says there is a release don't move. Don't go too fast. But stay until God orders the release. That's the word of the Lord for today. And I just want to encourage you. I, I, I know it's rough. I know the fire is at the highest level. But one time I did a study on diamonds and how the purest grade diamond is made. And, 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 and simply put, the longer it's in the fire, the higher value it has. I'm going to say that again. The longer it's in the fire, the longer it burns, the higher the grade of diamond, the higher the temperature, the more valuable that the diamond becomes. Stay there. It's not time yet. Your day of releasing hasn't come yet. You're about to be revealed. But God says just stay because it's only temporary. I preached that about a week ago. Be encouraged. This is just a temporary place. The plot is a part of the plan that would allow you to birth your purpose. Just hold it. Just stay still. Just wait a minute. I know it may not be popular. I know your folk may be telling you, you're crazy. I wouldn't be putting up with all of that. But God said, just hold on. Because the release date has not come. <laughs> oh my God. Some of you all are about to be released into the greatest thing that God has ever done to you, for you. Some of you all are just, just wait. Be patient. Hold on. The release date is on the way. So I want to share with you this thought and and Pastor Don, if you're on the line, I want you to come and, and, and pray us on offer here. But I want to share this with you. Paul and Silas knew that even in the most difficult times, they needed to go to God in prayer. In fact, their response of song and prayer led the jailer and his whole family to believe in Jesus Christ. They not only just won the soul of the jailer, they won the family. They won his household. Paul and Silas knew that they could pray to God anywhere. How's your prayer life? Even when you're in bondage, even when you're in captivity, even when things are not going like they should, know that you can pray. Know that God will come through. Just hold on. Hold on. On last week, we, we, we talked about why you're in the position, like why you're going through the things that you're going through. And that was in 2 Timothy, the 11th chapter, because you've been called to be a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, an apostle. 
because you've been given a place in the kingdom. You have been given God's permission to be his mouthpiece in the earth. That's why. You want to know why? That's why. And so this morning, I encourage you. God will provide a way of escape. Just keep doing what's right. Oh, come on, Pastor Donna. Come on and let's lead the people into prayer. Amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. so much donna for that well thank you beloved for joining us this morning listen we got a few announcements that we want to uh share with you on march the 25th march 25th we will be in our second face-to-face -face studio broadcast live broadcast we will be at the 3d complex off of uh panola road in lithonia georgia and so please join us we will be there at 11 a.m march the 25th that's that saturday morning that's 11 a.m. March the 25th. Uh, it is a Saturday morning. So please join us. Please join us. Please join us there. Also, uh, we will be in another studio broadcast on April the 8th at 11 a.m. So please join us there as well. We're still going to be at the 3D Complex. And we'll be in Studio 4. That is 2244. Uh, Panola Road in Lithonia, Georgia. You don't want to miss it. The doors will open at 10.45 a.m. And remember, once again, it is a live studio broadcast, live studio broadcast. So we will be there. Listen, come on. Last The last um, studio broadcast was off the chain. We were there February the 11th. And God tell you, God showed up. Signs one of us flew freely through that place. And so we just bless the name of the Lord for you being there. And if you're in the Atlanta area, that's June 23rd and the 24th. Once again, that's June 23rd and the 24th. We will be hosting our national wounded women's network conference and seminar. And this year's subject is what's in your box. And it's taken from uh, the, the scriptures of the woman who breaks the box, the alabaster box at the foot of Jesus. You don't want to miss it because we're doing some out of the box things at this women's conference and so come come be blessed come be blessed come honor the lord invest in your spiritual lives and so that's june 23rd and 24th if you need more information you can check out our facebook pages as well as our instagram pages or just reach out to us by email it is elimcdc at gmail.com or you can look on our facebook uh, website page which is elimcdc.com and we'll be more 
then uh, we'll be more than happy to assist you in registration. So come on, come on. Registration will end. I do believe it is March the 25th. Registration will be ending on March the 25th. And so we have some hard deadlines this year. We will. Uh, the conference will take place at the Hyatt House. That's the Hyatt House and the Perimeter in Atlanta. Well, be blessed, beloved. We love you with the love of the Lord. And don't forget, there is a way of escape. Be blessed. And we love you. We'll see you next week.